Hey everyone, I'm I'm back. I'm sorry it's been such a long time since the last tutorial video. I've seen all your comments asking for more, and I finally think I'm confident enough in my knowledge of the subject to actually start the long-awaited character animation tutorials. Now, this is how this portion of the tutorial series is going to work. There won't be just one big video, but a bunch of different smaller videos teaching about the different principles and tools for animation, such as how to use the graph editor, principles like overlapping action, easing, offset, anticipation, etc, etc, etc. Now, I know I already covered walk cycles before, but since then, Blender 2.8 has came out. But I thought I'd go back to the basics and start from the key elements of animating in the new Blender. Now that I got my babbling out of the way, let's begin. So what we're going to do first is, obviously, open up Blender. The first thing that we're going to see when opening a new scene is a cube, a light, and a camera. We're going to start off by deleting the camera and the light from our scene. Use left click to select the light, and then hold shift and left click the camera so that we're selecting both objects. Now to delete them, click X on your keyboard and a little pop-up will appear asking if you want to delete your selection. So we're going to click delete. Now we're just left with the cube. And now we're going to keyframe this cube so that it moves. Now the first question you might have is, what is a keyframe and why is it so important? Well, a keyframe is a point on the timeline that marks the beginning or end of a motion. The in-between frames are then interpolated between those points to create the illusion of motion. Keyframes are the building blocks from which you make an object move in Blender. So now let's demonstrate this by adding two keyframes to our cube here. First, by clicking and dragging the top bar of the timeline down here, make sure that this blue line is on frame 1. That blue line shows us what frame we're currently viewing on the timeline. Select the cube by left-clicking it, and then press I on your keyboard. Now, a drop-down menu should appear, giving you a ton of different keyframing options to choose from. Don't be overwhelmed, though. We'll only be using one today. On that drop-down selection, select the one that says Lock Rot Scale. Lock Rot Scale stands for the properties being keyframed, location, rotation, and scale. Now, if you look at the timeline on frame 1, you should see an orange dot has appeared. That is our keyframe. So we know where this cube's starting point is now, but now we have to set the second keyframe telling it where to move next. If the keyframes are close together, then the motion will be fast. If the keyframes are far apart, the motion will be slower. So let's go to frame 10 by clicking and dragging on the timeline and dragging our blue line to frame 10. Once it's there, we have to move our cube to its end location. To move the cube, you can either go over to the top left here and select the move tool, which brings up three arrows you can click and hold to drag in certain directions, or you can simply press G on your keyboard and drag your mouse around to move the cube, then left click to release it. Let's drag this cube to its end position. It can be anywhere you'd like, but I'm just going to move it over here by dragging it on the red arrow, the x-axis. Now that our cube is in place, let's keyframe it by pressing I again on the keyboard and selecting Lock Rot Scale. You should see a new orange dot appear on frame 10 of the timeline. That means we successfully did. <laughs> that means we have. That means we've successfully created animation. To view our animation, I'm recording. To view our animation, drag the timeline back to frame one and press spacebar to play the animation. To stop the animation, just press spacebar again. Lastly, I'm going to show you some of the timeline tools. To control the start and end frames of your animation, just type in the frame you want your animation to start and stop on right here where it says start and end. Since our animation is only 10 frames long, let's set the end frame to 10. So click on end and type 10, and it'll highlight the area that is still active. To zoom into our keyframes, you can either zoom in with your scroll wheel on the timeline, or click and drag this dot on the bottom scroll bar. To move the timeline across, you can either click and drag with your scroll wheel, or simply drag the bar at the bottom. Next, I'll show you the playback tools. Like I mentioned earlier, the space bar stops and plays the animation, but there are also buttons right here that let you control playback as well. The middle two buttons play your animation backwards or forwards. The button next to the middle ones move the timeline to the nearest keyframe. And the very left and right buttons move the timeline to the beginning or the end of your animation. Well, that's about it for the first episode. Feel free to visit our tutorial playlist so you can watch the previous tutorials. 
Don't forget to subscribe so you can see the rest of the episodes when they come out. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Bye.